Before this video starts, I'd like to give a shout out to our latest subscriber, SK Bull TV. If you'd like to have the chance to have a shout out, be sure to subscribe. Hey guys, and welcome to another Eye Contrast video. Today we'll be covering some helmet designs that have been recently released by Codemasters, and then we'll get into some gameplay and championship modes later on in the video. So be sure to stay tuned. Starting off with helmets, the most interesting thing I want to point out right away is if you look in the bottom left corner of the screen, it says unbranded. Now I'm not 100% sure what this means, but if it's any reference to my previous video, there is a possibility that we can add sponsors to our helmets. Now if this is true, I'd be absolutely stunned because I really wanted this to happen. And it would seem doable since they've incorporated that system into Dirt 4 with the sponsors on the cars. This is all speculation and Codemasters haven't announced it yet. But there is definitely the possibility that Codemasters is keeping this as a secret and using it as a surprise later on. Now let's take a deeper look into some of these helmets. As you can see we've got a bunch of unique competition winners. Starting off with helmet number 1 we've got some blue and red designs with a white background. It looks quite nice but we're going to continue on to helmet 2 now. This helmet also looks quite nice but nothing that really stands out to me. And moving on to helmet number 3 now. Another sophisticated design but still nothing that really appeals to me. Helmet 4 is much of the same but I think you can make some interesting things if you switch up the colours a little bit. And wow, <laughs> I'm not sure what inspired someone to pick this at Codemasters, but if you're into that kind of thing, then go for it. I mean, it's certainly going to stand out. I think Helmet 7 is going to be my favourite so far though, guys. It's a lot less clustered and it's a lot more balanced with those minor detailings. Also, you can make it look like lightning, I'm sure, which should be pretty interesting. Now, here's what I think some conceptual designs could be with the sponsors being added to the helmets. But once again, it's all speculation, so don't get your hopes up too high. So these were all the contest winners, and here's all the original sketches of those helmets. Some of them have changed quite a bit, but I'm sure that's just due to people from being different nationalities. Along with this, I've managed to find some images lurking around the internet of some new helmets as well. These might not be released by Codemasters yet, so I'm going to crack on with the championship modes. But before that, once again, here's some invitational events with the classic cars. As you can see, there's the overtake challenge, the pursuit, time attack, and all that yada yada stuff that I already mentioned in my previous video. If you want to check that out, I'll leave a link in the description. But here's the actual championship modes that we're really interested in. As you can see, we've got the default F1 2017 championship, the classic car championship, sprint championship, classic all-weather championship, Double Header Tour, which I think is two races, the Classic Hot Lap Series, the Asian GP Tour, the Sprint Spec Racing Series, the International Street Series, Premier Multi-Class Championship, Classic Dual Championship, GP Endurance League, Classic Sprint Racing League, Hot Lap Challenge Tour, European GP Championship, Classic Street Series, Wet Weather Racing League, and I'm not sure what that final one says, so we're going to have to wait for a confirmation on that. These are all the championship modes we know for now, and I'm sure if we get bored of career mode, these will keep us entertained. So along with this, I wanted to show you some new pictures of the research and development tree that will feature in career mode. As you can see in greater detail, we have the aerodynamics section here. Now some of the parts that we can develop in aerodynamics seem to be front downforce, rear downforce, drag and DRS. Now I also wanted to talk about department efficiency and department quality control. My understanding of department efficiency is that it reduces time to receive parts and the quality control will determine how successful the team is in developing that part. Keep in mind that upgrades can fail. Moving on to chassis development now. We can develop weight redistribution, weight reduction and tire wear. We can also develop department efficiency and quality control just like all the other paths. In durability we can develop the general wear along with all the other components of the engine including the gearbox. And last but not least, with the powertrain, we can upgrade the engine power and fuel consumption. Codemasters also released a few more screenshots on the game on their blog post, two of them being 2017 cars and the other two being the classic cars. Another thing that I can confirm is that there is no red flags, but there will be a few of these if you hang around him. In terms of gameplay, there's been a lot released lately, especially around Suzuka, and we have some Renault gameplay so we can get a real insight as to how the handling model feels. As you can see in the top left corner, we got some new GUI for yellow flags and then it resumes to green when green flag racing takes over, obviously. With that being said, the AI do look really racy and as well, we have the AI slider to match our skill level directly. Going through the first sector of Japan now, it looks really, really grippy with the new added downforce of the 2017 cars. Approaching the back of Verline now, we don't seem to have very much dirty air, so that's a good sign for racing in the game. 
The same can't be said for real life, but you know what? I prefer racing over the disaster that is happening this year with no overtakes basically at all for every Grand Prix. Not to play down the physics of this game, but they do have to water down the dirty air so that there is better racing. Going down the inside of Verlon now, the AI have seemed to have improved as they don't make the overtakes easy as Verlon holds it around the outside with a better traction out of the corner. With that being said, the undulation of this track has been improved greatly and it must be a joy to drive. I personally can't wait to get my hands on this game and start league racing as well as career mode. If you have any other ideas for videos or series, I'm open to suggestions in the comments. Also, I'm interested to see what team you want me to start with for career mode, so be sure to let me know in the comments. To prevent this video from getting too long, we'll go to another gameplay video. If you'd like to see this raw gameplay video, I'll leave a link in the description. It has been known that the AI are weak on the first corner of the first lap, so hopefully that gets patched before the game is released because we don't want to have a really weak AI in the game and we want to have it as realistic as possible. With other improvements to the game, there's also new podium celebrations which are welcomed and some new cutscenes which are a bit more polished than last year. The graphics are definitely an improvement from last year as you can see in this clip as well. Another thing to highlight is how much more real the characters and drivers look in this game have become and it'll be also really interesting to see what's in game that Codemasters haven't already announced yet. No long to wait now, the game comes out on the 25th of August so make sure you keep on checking back for more news. And I'll be finishing up this video by showing you a gameplay of Lando Norris driving around Suzuka in the McLarens. Thank you ever so much for watching, be sure to subscribe, like the video if you feel it deserves it, and I'll see you in the next video. Actually back to back all these McLaren Formula 1 cars. One big change for the 2017 car is the downforce and, and the tyres, obviously. The biggest advantage you get from that is braking distances and cornering speed, especially high speed corners. Well, I think the 2017 cars have obviously set a lot of lap records and track records this year, so it'll be cool to see how much faster or slower the cars are from several years ago. I struggle a lot more on traction on this car. It's a lot more difficult to control the car in both the high speed and slow speed corners. A H-box is a lot more difficult than using the paddle shifts you have nowadays. It's quite fun at the same time. Power delivery, so exit of corners is a slight improvement compared to the old center car. It's a bit more controllable on exits. Downforce seems already slightly better than what the older one did. This one was definitely uh, a bit nicer to drive. It already feels like a bit of a step between the old car and the 2017 car. But again, it's a very enjoyable car to drive. Definitely a cool car. I can tell top speed is slightly faster. I think just about hitting 305 kilometers an hour, which is obviously pretty fast. Even not one of the longest straights. Braking distances and general cornering speeds are slightly higher, and that's where lap time is being taken away from the older cars. A lot of very good races on in these years, and the cars look very good, very aggressive, very cool with all the aerodynamic bits and pieces that they had on back then. The downforce is a huge chunk better than all the other cars. Yeah, this took it to a whole new level. I would say that the car I'd like to drive most is Ayrton Senna's 1988 McLaren. I think that is a car that's most different to what I've probably ever driven before. Getting to experience a H pass and box as well, it's a, probably a car I think most motorsport drivers would want to drive at one point in their career.